Um, I want to discuss with you guys um, the life of this world being like war. Like literal war. And so I want you guys to picture in your mind. You know, when warriors are getting ready for battle, they get up, they put on their uniforms, they get dressed, they wear their armor, and they go out. And they fight whatever battles that they fight. Now the thing about this life, the thing about this life is that it's a war for each individual that never ends. It's just battle after battle, struggle after struggle, strife after strife, difficulty after difficulty. And so us, me, you, all of us, we are warriors. And we go out every single day and we fight our various battles. So to get an idea of what these battles might be like, I want us to discuss what the life of this world is like. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And certainly we shall test you with something of fear, hunger, loss of wealth, lives and fruit, livestock and, and fruits. But give glad tidings to as uh, uh, to the patient. Who, when afflicted with calamity, say, Truly to Allah we belong, and truly to Him we shall return. They are those on whom are the salawat. Receiving, receive, receive His mercy, and it is they who are the guided ones, right? So this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just told us, what that battlefield is like, right? That you're going to deal with fear, you're going to deal with hunger, loss of wealth, even your livestock, like your animals and, and, and oh, you know, if you're a farmer, all those types of things, you understand what livestock is. Um, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says at the end of that, but, be, but, but give glad tidings to the ones who are what? Who are patient. Not successful, but patient. Because that's what it's going to take, right? That's one of the things that it's going to take. And then, <clears throat> and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, also in another ayah he says, And know that your possessions and your children are but a trial, and that surely with the law is a mighty reward. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also saying what? Part of that battlefield, part of that war is your children, right? Is your wealth, right? And then he goes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, and we shall make a trial of you with evil and with good. And to us you will be returned. Right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is even saying a part of that battlefield is even the good things. Right? Even the good things. You're probably thinking how is something good a part of this battlefield. Right? And then even what? Evil things. Right? And so I want us to kind of break this down. Right? To get a better understanding of, of what it means. What this battlefield is really like. Right? And let's just go through our, our, our daily task. For some of us, we're studying, right? We're students. Rather you be in sixth grade, seventh, eighth, or you're in high school, ninth through twelfth, or you're in college, right? And with that comes all of the stresses, all of the worries, all of, all of the concerns. So, for instance, if you're in college, one of your concerns might be, man, how am I going to get this money for my semester? I don't know how to do it. And then that comes with it, all these mini little battles. Now I got to worry about getting the money halal, right? Now we have student loans, but then that comes with interest, and that's its own battle. And we know with that, right, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that whoever takes interest, right, whoever takes riba, or pays riba, or gives riba, these people is as if they're at war with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or Allah is at war with them. Right? Not just that, but then you got to find what? you got to find time. 
right? So if you're if you're in school, you're trying to find the finances to get in there. You got to find a job. You got to find wealth. You got to find money to pay for it. And then you got to find time to get the studying in. And then what happens, right? When you're getting down to the wire, some of us, unfortunately, we procrastinate. We wait to the last minute to study or get ready for a class. And then what? Allah starts to test us with something else new. Fear. Start to worry, man, if I don't pass this test, man, I may not get into med school. Or if I don't pass this test, man, I might not graduate this semester. And all of these different fears, and I got to do this, and I got to do that. And what does that do? That also leaks into other things that it's a part of life. So now you're spending all your time studying, all of your work, all of that, right? And now you're neglecting, you might be, Allah have him, right? But you might be neglecting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's another thing you got to worry about. Your salah, right? Paying your zakat, doing your duties to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of these different things, right? Working, subhanAllah. With work, all of these various different, of different types of challenges come. With work, just work by itself. Working with people who aren't Muslim, right? And, 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 and being exposed to their lifestyles and having to and having to have to be understanding about certain things that they get involved with and how you're supposed to be, you know, you have to maintain your Islam and depending on your job, right, you might have to deal with some things that are that are un Islamic and you have to make these life decisions and life choices that, you know, affect you religiously and affect you in this dunya. All of that, right? Not just work, upkeeping your bills. Allah says it in the ayah, right? That we will test you with your wealth. So now you're sitting back and you're worrying, man, how am I going to get money for my bills? How am I going to pay for this? I got to pay the gas. I got to pay the light bill. I got to pay the rent. I got to pay uh, whatever other utilities that might come with the house. All of these different things that you worry about. All of these are many little battles. Many little wars that you're constantly fighting, right? You start worrying about not having enough finances because not having enough finances, that leaks into, well, how am I going to get around? How am I going to pay for my kids and the things that they need? How am I going to pay for this and for that? All of these battles are happening at the same time, right? Maintaining your, uh, your obligations to Allah. And then what, what happens, right? When we're making these choices, when we're deciding that we're going to pick this over that, right? Then... When we want to, when we really want to study Islam, or we really want to study Deen, or dedicate some time to reading Quran, what happens? That drops off. Because that's because we perceive that we don't have time to do that and this, you know, that and the stuff that's related to the dunya, right? And so these things drop off, right? And then that has its own set of issues that come with that, right? You know, subhanAllah, if, if you don't, if you, uh, rather, you know, you're the mother or the father of the household, if you don't learn enough, if you don't have enough information about this deen and this religion, and then you're the disseminators of that inf information to your children, how they going to learn? Right? And then we think, okay, well, we need to send them to Islamic school because I don't have the time to teach them, right? And then that comes with its own fitting. Everything. Everything, 24 hours, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing us. This is, the, the war is on. Not just that, there are some people in other countries who, you know, they're, they're, their war is way different than ours. They wake up and they, their war is, man, how am I eat? Because poverty is so real in that country that, I don't know how I'm going to eat, right? Or they wake up and they think to themselves, man, you know, we have this oppressive dictator in, in power and control and in office or whatever the case may be. If I'm walking down the wrong street or if the wrong soldiers see me, I might lose my life. Because I, I look like I'm a Muslim or because I'm a Muslim. And then that brings on a whole wealth of challenges. Now, you know, you start to wonder, you know, do I even want to be Muslim anymore? Allah billah, right? So many of us are going through these types of challenges. Not just, not just religious challenges, right? Take, for instance, just something as simple as mental health. Mental health. And this is something that, unfortunately, within the Muslim community, we kind of brush under the rug like it's not important. So many Muslims, so many Muslims are suffering from 
post-traumatic stress. So many Muslims are dealing with, uh, you know, issues of confidence. You know, uh, believing that they're good enough or believing that, you know, that they have something to offer to this ummah or offer to their community or offer to their families. Some people don't even feel that they're, 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 they're worthy of anything. Some people have legitimate psychological and, and mental problems. And, and, and so many issues with that, right? And then, subhanAllah, listen to this hadith of the Prophet wasallam. The Prophet wasallam said that Verily, when a servant commits a sin, a black mark appears upon his heart. If he abandons the sin, seeks forgiveness, and repents, then his heart will be polished. If he returns to the sin, the blackness will be increased until it overcomes his heart. It is the covering that Allah has mentioned. No, rather, a covering is over their hearts from what they have earned. So now, when we get involved in this sin, or that sin, and we're doing all of these terrible things. Again, we're warriors, right? We were sent out to fight these different battles, right? Battles not just not just of finances and religion and, this, and, and working in school, but battles of our own desires, of our own makings, right? Fighting because we really want to do something that we know we shouldn't do. We really want to do it. It's power. It, it reminds me of, of, of this hadith. Uh, of, of the Prophet ﷺ. He said that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Jannah, He sent Jibreel alayhi salam, He said, go and look at it. And so he went and he looked at it. And then he came and he said, O oh Lord, by your glory, no one would hear about it except they would want to enter it. That's how beautiful it is. Everything you could ever possibly want. I think it, it's there. Uh, the, the best tasting things, the, the most beautiful sights you could ever see. Who wouldn't want to be here? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, then he says, to, uh, he says to Jibril, or then he, so I, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala surrounded it by the hated things. What are the hated things? The hated things are the things that are good for us, right? That we don't necessarily want to do. Or the things that are bad for us that we should stay away from, right? These are the hated things or that we might necessarily want to do that they're bad, but we have to stay away from, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered that Jannah be surrounded by these hated things. Then he told him, go again. Then Jabir alayhi salam went and he came back and he said, Ya Allah, I'm afraid nobody's going to make it. They're not going to make it. It's too hard. Then he told him to go through Jahannam. Foul, repulsive, ugly. The 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 the, uh, the, the fruit uh, uh, of uh, from zakum, right? This fruit that's so bitter that when you eat it, uh, it, 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 it it's like spikes, and it, it, the taste of it is 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 beyond repulsive, right? Place that is so hot that it burns your skin off, right? And, 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 and burns it off rapidly, right? To the point that Allah just keeps replacing that skin over and over and over again. Shoes or sandals or a rock or stone that's so hot that it boils your brain, right? These are the things that we hear about Jahannam, right? Of course, nobody would want to be here. And then Allah orders it to be surrounded by all of the things that we what? That we desire. That we love the war the battle right the battle with our desires the battle with the things that we want to do right that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has demarcated as being wrong or haram right this is surrounding Jahannam then he goes again and he comes back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he says I fear that everyone will be here and so, this is the nature of this dunya. Every single aspect, every single part of life is a test. You lose somebody that you love, Allah is testing you. Let me see how he's going to react. I took his favorite. 
I took I took one of his gems, one of his one of his loved ones, someone that he ultimately cared about. I'm gonna take that person. Let me see how Jamil or whoever, right? How they're gonna deal with it? Or strikes you with an ailment. You're sick, right? How, let me see how you going how he's gonna deal with it. Yeah, I don't, what did I do to deserve cancer? Or what did I do to deserve this element or that element? What did I do? I was always this. I was. It's unfair, Ya Rabbil Alameen. The battle, the war, is continuing. Let me see what he's going to do. Listen, listen to this hadith of the Prophet. He says, No misfortune or disease befalls a Muslim. No worry or grief or harm or distress, not even a thorn that pricks him. But Allah will expiate for some of his sins because of that. Right? So the Prophet is saying, no amount of pain, no amount of stress you're going through, no hardship. Right? If you go through it and you bear it with patience, and you bear it with patience, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking away your sayyat. So we sit here and we say, Ya Allah, forgive me for my sin. Forgive me for, for falling victim to, this, to this, this particular desire that I had. Forgive me for losing that battle that I was fighting. I wasn't the best warrior. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you some type of difficulty for you to deal with. But as you're dealing with it, trying, because what did, what did the, first, what the first ayah that we mentioned say? Right? For those who are patient, right? Because you're patient, Allah's oh, getting rid of these sayyat. Getting rid of it. Because you're bearing it with patience. Purifying you. Taking that black, that black spot off of your heart. Right? And so, I'm saying all of this to, to, to make us understand that this dunya, this world that we live in, it is no breaks. We don't get breaks. And if you are getting good from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's blessing your wealth, He's blessing your, your, your khair and everything that you're going through. The test in that is, let me see if He's going to be thankful. Let me see if He's going to give from His wealth to those who need it. Right? I didn't just give it to Him for, I, for no reason. Let me see what He's going to do. Constantly. Constantly, 24-7, being tested. Your parents tell you to do something. The test in that is, okay, let me see if, if he's going to obey them. Let me, gonna, let me see if he's going to say oof to them. Every little thing. Every little thing is a test. So, understanding that this is the, the, the battleground, right? Understanding that this is the battleground. And this is something that I want to mention because we Muslims need to be more compassionate towards each other, more understanding, you know, more, more uh, supportive. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the, 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 the support, the party, the strength of the Muslim is who? Three. Allah, right? His messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Muslims, the believers. This is your support system. This is your support mechanism. And everybody here that is a believer, wallahi, everybody is going through their own battles. Some of them are the same. Some of them are not. Some of them are different from each other. Some of them are things you wouldn't even believe. And we need to be more compassionate about what it is that we are going through. SubhanAllah, you see a brother involved in something like um, whatever, whatever it might be. You know, uh, he's drinking khamar or whatever the case may be. You know, it's easy to be an individual, right? Because what happens, before I get into that, what happens, right? When you come back from your, your daily battles, right? What happens? Uh, when, when warriors go out to war, some of them come back unscathed. They won their battles. They were, they were victorious. 
heroes even. And then others come back from their battles, might be missing a limb, right? Might be bleeding from some cut or some scar or something that happened or whatever. They're, they're in critical condition. They about to die. So what happens? They bring them back to who? They bring them back to the medics, right? They bring them back to the camp. And at the camp is your support system. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? And, and this deen and this religion, right? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi and who? The Muslims. So you're brought back to your support system. And that's where the believers are supposed to be what? Understanding. Not just understanding. I'm not saying we just, you know, whatever. People that's out here wilding out, doing whatever they want to do. And we just look the other way and say, oh, you know, no. We don't judge either. We don't say, oh, look at so-and-so. He's always getting drunk. Man, he's never, he's never going to make it. He's going to go to Jahannam. Or, oh, he's, he's, he's so weak. He's so terrible in this, or he's he's this, or he's that, or look at him talking to those girls, or those girls talking to those guys over there. Oh, they're so terrible. You don't know what some people are going through. You have no clue. And it's so easy to dismiss, pass off a fitting or a hardship that somebody is dealing with, and write it off and say, ah, oh, look at them, look at that, look at this. Until you actually get into it. Until Allah starts to test you with it. And you see the magnitude of that test. That hardship. When, wallahu alam, who knows, right? When uh, the money isn't coming in like it should be coming in. And the difficulty is there. And you're trying to scrape up whatever money you can to pay for rent. And someone does this or they do that. They do this haram act or this, or this other act to get the money. Why? Because their fits in is so heavy. Does that mean that we turn the other eye? No. We correct each other. That's, that's, that's somebody who cares about you, right? If you were to come out of a battle, right? And you were doing these things inside that battle... That were, you know, man, if, if you just, if you just would have held your shield up higher, right? Or if you just would have attacked from this way or that way, you would have won that battle, right? So the Muslims are supposed to give counsel. Speak up. Let us know what we're doing wrong. But not say when you come back, oh man, you're, you're, you're a terrible warrior. You don't know what you're doing. Get out of here, man. Man, you, you, shh. You're going to die next time you go out, right? No. No. Because what you might not be seeing is all of these, all of these challenges that are surrounding that individual on that battlefield. You know, we see Muslim brothers and sisters suffering from anxiety and things like that. We write it off. It's like, oh, come on, man. It's just, just, you know, just make dua. You'll be fine. Nah, man. Some people need help. Some people need more assistance. We need to be more understanding. We need to be more compassionate. We should never shy away from saying what's right. Speak our minds. Speak up. Tell the truth. But support each other. Help each other. We cannot win this battle alone. We cannot win this fight alone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not expect us to live in this dunya and go through the things that we go through without each other. So, I hope that we can be just more understanding and compassionate when the soldiers leave the fields of battle that they go through every single day, whatever they may be, and come back home looking for their support systems. That's when we have to be there. That's when we have to hold them down. That's when we have to patch up their wounds. Because guess what? Tomorrow, you, me, everybody else, going back out to the battlefield. Because it don't stop. 24-7. You are fighting against this dunya, your desires, your hardships, your tests. Allah is giving you good. He's blessing you. But then you got to be aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You got to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You got to use your good in the right way 24-7. Don't stop. That's the price of Jannah. 
it's how much it costs. You know, and if we slip, Allah Alam, Allah still may be merciful to us. SubhanAllah. Right, I'll, I'll leave with this. Allah subhanahu there's a hadith Qudsi. I always say this, but I, I love repeating it because it just shows the magnitude of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. He says that if your sins were to reach the sky, the heavens, and you did not associate a partner with me, meaning you didn't commit shirk, you didn't say that someone else was God or say that I don't exist altogether, but as long as you didn't do that, I forgive you. It's nothing. I forgive you. Even though you clowning. Even though you out here losing your mind. Doing this, doing that. Or trying your hardest, getting back up, trying to keep going. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, I got mercy for you. Just come to me. Ask for it. I'll give it. Right? Just come and, and make toba. So who are we? The support system if Allah can forgive every single one of those acts right as long as we don't you know commit shirk right Allah can forgive every single one of those things who are we you and me who don't really matter who are we to hold uh, to, to hold judgment on each other oh phew, he's evil she's evil she's going here he's going there and we do it so much pointing fingers so much you know, we need help each other up, man. It's that time. Anyway, I don't want to get to lecturing any further. Thank you so much. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless everyone and keep us fighting together because, wallahi, we're all on the same ship battling whatever things that are coming out and, and testing us. So maybe, you know, be support to one another. And um, take care. Have a beautiful weekend. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless your week. And I'll see you next week, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.